All right, welcome back to Let Supreme Ghost the Black Parade. Mission four, Death's Dominion, is on our agenda today. And this, in my opinion, is the best mission in the campaign, at least up to and including mission eight. I have not played the last two missions yet. I've started mission nine, but uh, this is my favorite. Uh, many of them are extremely well made, but this one is just a little notch, I think, about all the other ones. And I have a feeling that this will be my favorite in the entire campaign once I finish it. So let me know what you guys think of this one. Um, now, before we actually start it, I'm going to load up a save game from the beginning of Trial and Iron. I'm going to show you two things that I didn't show you in my playthrough. Uh, if now I've just picked a lock on the sewer door that I spent so much time avoiding. And you can see that there is one of those sweels that runs away from you. It looks a little bit like a, like the tail of a crocodile if you come down here and only see the tail end of it. But that's one thing. And there's another thing, too, that somebody pointed out in the, in the comments recently. That I think I mentioned when I played this mission. It's in the... It's in the little tomb where I said I had never seen anything move, though there were some reports that there was something in that little caged area. But actually there is, if you're quick. There. Has there is someone come? there is a rat man in here, so this is apparently a rat man's cave. Nothing supernatural there, but not save the... it's cool that I got to actually see that after um, I forgot who commented. So kudos to the one who who shared that. Excellent. So there's nothing else really about this mission besides what I showed you in the video. So let's move on. Let's go to the end of Trial of Iron, which was not a su supreme success. And we're going to move on to Death's Dominion. It appears my new employer is pleased with my success, and now wants me to get him another trinket. Rumor has it a fabled ruby known as Aldrius Demise was buried with its eponymous owner in a complex of catacombs and vaults deep below Stone Market. The place was condemned decades ago after it fell to ruin and became haunted, and no one dares to go except corpse dodgers, and maybe a few would-be tomb raiders. It would be wise to get my hands on some holy water, if I want to avoid complications. Victoria managed to find a raw sketch of the place from the original Hammer plans. I have no idea if it's accurate, since it was one of many possible variations of the final construction. Knowing the Hammerites, the place is probably rigged and filled with all manner of traps to dissuade plunderers such as myself. I'd better be cautious and tread softly. Since these tombs were built for wealthy merchants, there's bound to be riches down there. Let's hope the competition didn't make off with them before I get there. I don't like this. I'm risking my neck for some stone I'm not even sure is there, and I can't bail out like any sane person would. This ordeal won't be easy. Alrighty. So, an expert, we have to explore the catacomb complex under Stone Market and procure the fabled ruby Aldrius Demise. One of the heirs to the Noir Quier. Noir Quier, I think that's how you. Noir is, isn't that dark or black in French? 
Merchant family is after a necklace inlaid with sapphires, supposedly kept by one of their long dead ancestors. This could fetch a nice little bonus. Get a hold of it. <clears throat> Rumor has it that an aristocrat, Simon Albrecht, was buried with his armor in these tombs. A piece featuring his house crest would be very lucrative on the black market. The stone market merchants inter in interred here don't need their riches anymore. They won't mind if you rob the tombs for at least 1600 worth of valuables. Although your stay in Stone Market will be brief, there's still no need to kill anyone. When your tasks are complete, return to where you started. Good. So, um, this mission is Supreme Ghostable. But we have to skip some loot. Um, due to uh, traps that are not you know, allowed to be triggered by for Supreme. Um, and we have to take a fairly uh, strange route through the mission. Kind of similar to Trial of Iron. Not for the same reasons, though. One particular reason, and, and I'll show you that. It comes up pretty quickly, actually. So we're going to get to what is normally anticipated as the last part of the mission fairly early or in the middle of our run. And then we're going to work our way back up. So I'll explain the reasonings for that. But yeah, this is an excellent, excellent mission. Uh, a clear throwback to Bone Horde, though more cramped, confined and sort of claustrophobic, which which I think suits these kind of missions very well. Bone Horde was very open and large, and that had its own, you know, served its own purpose in that mission. Alrighty. So, uh, we do need a water arrow. We have one, or more, but so we're not going to need to buy any. We do need a holy water vial as well, but we can pick up one. We're not allowed to buy anything here. We do need one to get max loot. There's a tip here as well. One of your acquaintances claims he knows something about the catacombs. This information comes at a price, however. Uh, this says, in addition to being used to bury the dead, the lower tombs were also used for funeral ceremonies and feature at least two chapels with specially blessed holy water fonts, which the resident Smith used to bless holy symbols and weapons. This could be useful to you if there is water left in there. So, it's just uh, referencing a couple of holy water fonts, which of course we don't need to uh, use at all. Well, we could have instead of picking up a holy water vial, but we're not going to be close enough to that. Um, we have rope arrows too, so that's enough. It's always good to have two, but here we have it. So let's start. So we do start in the streets above the catacombs. Um, so there's quite a few maps and the maps are very well made and that's important because this mission can be very confusing. I'll cover the maps once we get to the certain areas I think. Uh, or at least not right now because we're in the streets and there are no there are no maps of the streets. Here's so a drunk guy. Ralph Downer Apothecary. <laughs> There we go. This door here is pickable, but you don't need to pick it. Here's a readable. Hereby declared by Burgomaster Hart, with consent from Lord Monsiger, protector of our noble quarter. We probably recognize Monsiger from Endless Rain. Let it be known that none shall, by night or by day, in secrecy or openly, throw rubbish, dung, or any manner of filth into the canals of the quarter of Stone Market, its districts and wards. Also, no one is to cause any waters or other things to be thrown from the windows, by night or by day, within the franchise of the quarter of Stone Market, its districts and wards, on pain of a heavy fine of which the amount shall be decided at the dis uh, discrecy? discretion. I don't know, I haven't seen it, that word written that like that before. Of the burgomasters and aldermen. So no filth in the canals. Alright. So we don't have to pick the lock on that door because we can head in here. There is a guy here, but... We can avoid I him. This. His gaze. This awful air turned my silk handkerchief black. Purse. It's also readable here. The City Tribune, 9533. The Iron King dead at 81. 
Leobald Grandmodern, known by his moniker the Iron King, died of old age yesterday evening at his high town palace, surrounded by his family and his priest. You might remember uh, one of the conversations at the beginning of Trial of Iron um, had the priest visit um, Grandmodern when he was, you know, on his deathbed. So now he's passed away. Lord Grandmodern was, like his father and his grandfather before him, at the helm of a vast iron mining and smelting empire. His son, Leobald, is set to succeed him. The last month of his life, Lord Grandmodern spent in preparation for the Jubilee Ball to commemorate the 20th anniversary of his high town estate. The event, which is to take place this recidivist, will now also be hosted by his son. More on page 8. Voxfell drainage system perfectly fine, officials say, says. The city is bracing for the yearly heavy rains of Beneficus, and Voxfell district is no exception. A thorough renovation of the canals and overall drainage systems of the wealthiest district of Stonemarket was conducted earlier this year by Colton Breckery, the head of the Public Works Division of Stonemarket. Breckery was quoted as saying, We at the Stonemarket Public Works Division are more than ready, uh, and I and my men are not Clark's band of amateurs. Citizens of Voxfell can rest assured the infrastructure will prevent floodings. The drainage system is perfectly fine, if I do say so myself. More on page 18. <laughs> These plebeians really don't understand anything. Okay. And we can also take... An artifact... Right here. Can't wait to see their faces when I show them my latest acquisition. We can head out. So up here is a sort of a scaffolding, a rope, and a worker. Here's a sleeping guard as well. If you try to climb this, it'll fall down. Once you get high enough, this guy does Oh, okay, that was him saying it, I guess. You can get up here, actually, with some stackables, and there's nothing up there. And I don't think you can interrupt this worker, either. There's a conversation going to come up here. Have you ever seen a running man stop in the name of a baron? What are you tapping about? <clears throat> well, you know, when you showed halt in the name of a baron. Oh, of course not. That's what arrows are for. <clears throat> okay, these guys don't alert to us. There's nothing here. This is um, Headsman Court. Here's a water arrow. It's a nice sign here for the candle shop. This is... Elsmore, clockmaker. We're gonna head in there. A couple of apples and a goblet here. There's nobody in this building. And then in the office, there's a letter. Willoughby Bright, you don't need to hide it anymore. I know you won't be able to pay what you owe me for a while. I learned from a good source that you are in deep trouble with some warden. I, however, can lend you more coins for a very small interest, in exchange for but a small service. Do you know that guy called Broderick? The wife is pestering me for one of them fancy spirulian gemstone-powered lamps. Said her sight diminished her ever since she gazed far too long into the fires from the burning stakes. Crazy woman. Anyway, back to Broderick. He's a jeweler attending a shop at Grime Street. A real parsim parsimonious scallywag, if I ever saw one. I've tried repeatedly to get him to accept my generous offers to purchase one of them. But cold stares and long silences were the only answers I got from him. Try to scare him a little. Throw stones at his stained glass windows or piss on his doorstep. I don't really care. I want him to be fearful enough so he'll want to get rid of that precious gemstone. And I'll be there to buy it off him naturally. But you better remember this. While you do your work, someone somewhere in the vast stonework next to his place could be watching you. You certainly don't want that E. So I thought for the longest time that Grime Street was somewhere we could visit in this mission and get 
uh, valuables here. Uh, but it's not, it's just a part of the backstory. And it makes sense because you can't pick this readable up. The fact that it's just left there means that it's not really something you need to bring along with you. Here's a painting that highlights. Here's a safe. And in there we have a bottle of wine and a spirit potion. Uh, we have seen the spirit potions before, right? <sighs> so the ones that conceal you as long as you stay or go slow. Here we have grapes, a food item. And that should be it. Some nice artwork. So the candle store is open, um, but you can go in the back way too. The owner there is not alerting to us unless we steal something so we're gonna damn someone's already here looks like these guys haven't come back yet I'm gonna need to find that ruby before them so this is the entrance to the catacombs which is what you sort of commented on there <sighs> Am I stuck now? Mm -hmm. I am. <sighs> we go back here, there is a side entrance. I don't know what's going on here. I can't go in here for some reason. <laughs> There we go. Okay. We can steal a stack of gold coins on the counter right in front of her face. Without her noticing. Here's a door. This is uh, not pickable and it's locked. Nothing we can do about that. Go up here. You take a red goblet in this room here. You can get in here, but not right now. There's also another rope arrow on the window sill. That's everything from the streets. There's nothing else you can climb up here, but you don't get anything. So let us go down into the tombs then. Here. All right. So let's read this. Grave robber's instructions. All right, boys and girls, we've talked about this a bit, but now I'm absolutely certain that Aldrius' demise should be somewhere within these tombs. Barlow went for some digging last night and found us a way in. Remember that we've been promised a huge sum of money if we manage to get it, so we better get to work. Besides, we can plunder the other vaults with no repercussions. I know you're all familiar with this whole grave robbing business, but I feel that I need to remind you of the rules since our last accident with Roger. Make sure nobody follows you when you're coming. The local watchdogs have been bribing, been bribed by our employer and should leave us alone. Still, we don't want any witnesses and Monsager isn't aware of our operation. Let's make sure it stays that way. Do not talk and watch your step. Being nosy in ancient catacombs like that is a guaranteed death. We know almost nothing about the place, so be even more vigilant than usual. Follow only the paths Ernestine and Barlow mark as safe. These two are extraordinary scouts. If you hear strange sounds or see someone who isn't us, get the taff away. If I see you trying to hide something, I'll break your bones and leave you on the spot. Don't stray off too much. If you ain't outside after sunrise, we consider you gone and we skedaddle. Too bad if you're just late. We can't take any risks. When we're done, we don't know you and you don't know us until another wealthy crook needs our services. Here's a reminder of the signs we use. An upward arrow means that the room is safe. A downward arrow means that the room is trapped, so proceed with caution. A cross means taffing moving corpses, so don't go that way. 
Another thing, tonight's undead bait is just some random lowlife tagging with us. He's off to easy money. No need to feel too concerned about him. Just trip him if the corpses are after us. Whisker. Alrighty. So you can see here there's an and up... And the torches are lit. How nice of them. There's an upward arrow, which means that this next area is safe. So we don't need those instructions there. And the torches are lit. How nice of them. Indeed. Alright. So now we are in the tomb. So let's make a save. And let's take a look at the map here. Alright. So we uh, enter into this region right here. So we're now in... Yeah, we're now in this section. Now, this part of the map is the Upper Tombs extension. Uh, and it actually covers multiple levels. It doesn't look like that here. But this area, uh, minus the, the box that's sort of above it, that's a lower level. And this is actually below that. So it goes down as you go from left to right here. It can be a little bit confusing. Now, I'm going to mark a couple of spots that take you from one to the next in this one. We're going to mark them with numbers. So, for example, here, if you go at this exit, let's mark that with a 1, you come to the Grimworth extension here. So that'll take you to 1 there. Uh, in the staircase here, there's actually a, an exit, a broken wall here, that'll take you to this area, to this staircase. So that's uh, fairly self-explanatory. If you go at this exit, let's mark that three, you come to the lower tombs here. So I did that as I played through the mission the first time, I marked the entrances and exits so that I saw how the map was connected. And if you do that, the maps are very useful. If you don't bother using the maps, you have to memorize the, the tombs themselves, and that's very difficult. Uh, the Grimworth extension, you can get to the lower tombs that way as well. So let's mark that with four here. Take that exit. The entrance here is blocked, so you can't go there. Uh, that will actually take you to this entrance right here. You also have an exit here to the lower tombs. Let's call that five. That'll take you here. But that isn't an, an area we're going to use at all. Uh, there are a couple of more entrances and exits, but we're going to mark those, or I'll tell you those at least, once we get to those lower levels. You have a Grave Warden's Vigil here, which is much deeper and lower. These are the north lower tombs, upper floor and lower floor. That's why they're kind of similarly shaped. So here they've separated the floors. Uh, but even this one shows part of multiple floors, so it can be a little bit difficult. The entrance here is also blocked. And those two that says entrances here, they're, they're not possible to use. They've been collapsed. And then lastly, you have the south lower tombs. Uh, this is the actually the lowest level. And if you climb up these the staircase, for example, you come up here. So this is a higher level. And here we have the Albrecht extension, where you can find an objective, and the Aldrius extension, where you can find another ex uh, objective. This all is mapped by Brother Brutus, Master Cartographer, in 729. So notice that that's over a century before the year we're in now. So these are 100-year-old maps. So uh, they're bound to have some deviation from what it's actually like, but it's actually very close. You have the Belor Vault, the Pizarre Extension, which you um, cannot get to. And you have an Ossuary here, and then you have the Noir Creer Extension on the north lower tombs, the lower floors, and that's where another objective. So those are the three objectives we're going to get. Um, so that's that's it. So I'll, I will refer to the, to the map quite a bit. I'm going to save it here now so that we have those marks. Okay. There's not really anything to worry about up on this level. I notice there's a downward arrow, which means that here we have a trapped area. 
Strangers may pause to mark those who repose below. Perchance a good friend may read, perchance a foe. Or can they learn that fallacy and trust, rancor and malice, end in dust to dust? So this is the first loot item we have to skip. If you take this per, uh, wait, vase here, which is worth um, 50, I believe, <laughs> you have fire arrow traps that um, shoot. So simply triggering a trap for Supreme is not allowed, whether you get hurt or not, and whether there is evidence that is triggered. As long as you trigger the trap, then it's... Um, disallowed. So that's the first 50 skipped there. That We just have to do that. There are going to be some. But since the mission can be Supreme Ghosted, I'm going to accept that. Here we can look down. There's a sleeping zombie down there. We'll go there a little bit later. We're going to jump across here. So now we're in uh, sort of in this room here. But on the top level. Looks like it goes underneath, but we're on the top here. So up here we have a red vase and a cheese. And then there is actually... It's difficult to see. Let's see if I can... There we go. There is a holy water vial. We're going to take that. If this font had worked, then we could have just used that. But we can't. There's a water arrow here as well. This is broken. And here's a readable. Um, Hiram, the transaction has failed. We're in deep. The bloke in charge got caught by the Baron's hounds. We can only blame bad luck this time. A couple of Aristos were horse racing in an alley that was far too narrow to avoid our guy who was carrying the package and didn't see them. You can imagine what happened next. One of the horses fell down and the blue blood landed on, in the dirt and in the mud. They didn't need anything more to yell at the guards and order them to arrest our guy. We're going to find him... Uh, burned alive on the plaza in the next days and probably find ourselves at the bottom of the river with iron weights attached to our feet unless some sort of miracle happens. Hide your sorry hide in the graveyard next to Drakboon uh, in the meantime. There are catacombs there that were used by Mulligan and his boys when they were the bane of Stone Market. Hide inside. I'll contact you again when I have some better news. I don't think the dead are restless, but be careful nonetheless. You never know. I've heard stories about cannibal beggars and other degenerates. Probably tall tales, but as I said, you never know. Hennep. So, Drekboon seems to be a location that is close to the catacombs. Um, and those are probably these catacombs. Drekboon, you might remember, is one of the gambling dens um, that was mentioned in readables, in at least in Lord Bafford's Manor, maybe even in Assassin's. Can't remember. Um, so that supposedly as close to where we are now, if that in fact is these catacombs. Let's drop down here, shall we? Okay. Nothing up here. Just the skulls. This, we're not going to go over here now, but that's this exit that I set down to number two. Instead, we're going to go to the bottom level here. Now we get to the area where we saw the sleeping zombie from above. So you can't get past the sleeping zombie here. We're going to need to, but you don't, you're not able to this way. Here, there's just some corpses, just an empty room, really, with a sword. We're going to take this way. So that is one into the Grimworth extension. Here's a flooded area. There are two water arrows in the water under here, if you're looking for, for things like that.
more water way down here. Okay. So this is Grimworth. This is the Grimworth tomb itself. And you can see by the arrow that it's supposedly trapped. Let's see what's going on here. Robert Jack Grimworth, Merchant Prince, 658 to 712. Stay, stranger, and shed a tear. For the good Grimworth lieth here. He was a gentleman of good life, married Rosa Felton as his wife. He may thank the builder he got her. She bore him a son and a daughter. His son was a strong man of might, for which King Roland made him knight. His daughter was born wise and daring, and married was she to uh, Jor the Perrin. Interesting. So, it does say shed a tear. Maybe that can be a hint. But if we take... If we take the blue vase here, um, which is worth as a 25, then... Um, no, it's worth 100. Then we trigger a Spitfire trap, so that's not allowed. However, um, if we use a holy water vial and shoot a holy water... on this one. Then we can take the vase without anything happening. Without triggering the trap. So we've sort of deactivated the trap. However, that is actually a part of a side quest. Because now what we have done is we have spawned a sword hilt. Um, this is a, actually a, a holy sword that you can find four pieces of. I will show you where to find all of those. I'm going to take this one because that removes evidence that I was here. After all, I trigger this to appear in order to get that loot, so I don't want this to be around for anyone else to find. So I feel I can remove evidence, so then I should. So I don't consider this an unnecessary pickup because it's necessary to remove evidence. <clears throat> so that's the way you can take that piece of loot. Let's see. Here, this is all blocked and collapsed. So here we can see this is trapped and it has undead, it seems like. Indeed, here's the sleeping zombie. Here's a statue, a big statue. And there is a step here that you can trigger a trap from. So we don't want to do that. Instead, if we jump over here. What's very cool is that now that statue is gone, and it's become small, and it's loot. So now we can take that loot, 299. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, in this cup, you have some coins, 309. We also have is a very well hidden piece of loot that I was not going to take that way. here. Ah! Wow. <sighs> there. Take that skull. 401. That way we avoid the alert from, from that one. Here you have a goblet you can see on the other side, actually. You can probably just jump across this way. Here is um, one of the... Uh, maybe this is the guy that they were 
going to um, lure into one of the enemies. Here's a loaf of bread. And you do actually need, if you want the holy sword, you do need one uh, food piece, food item. So this might be a good one to take. I'm not going to do that. Here. Okay, we heard... I think we heard an enemy down below. We're going to take this. When you take this, you trigger... Wake up the zombie in the other room. But we're not gonna do that. <sighs> They're just gonna go up there at 416. So, um, waking a zombie like that is not alerting a zombie to wake up. That's very different. This just happens because of a script that tells a zombie to wake up, but you can tell he's not in an alerted state or anything. So that is not a bust to Supreme. There were some questions on the forums about that. But if you simply start a script that trigger an enemy to either spawn or wake up or something like that, that's not because you've been spotted or anything and you're not busting any, any rules. Here. This doesn't take you anywhere, it just takes you around. I head all the way down here. There is a zombie down there. You can take a goblet here. If you see down here, you can actually fall down into a grotto. Uh, that we're not going to do, but that's a way you can get down, actually. Okay. The, I didn't know if he was on if it was on his way back or what it was. Gotta wait for it to come back and turn around. So this is um, we're now actually uh, this is Grimworth tomb itself, and we were up here in the north. We've gone down now to the southern part of the Grimworth extension, and we're now actually uh, looking into the exit for number four. And this would take you up here. Uh, you have to go through the shrine that we're looking at first. So sort of a, several tombs are in here. The patrolling bug swarming zombie. We're not going to go through this way. We're just going to take the loot in there. There. Two artifacts and one gold candlestick. So, uh, we have to get a piece of loot beyond this zombie. So, we're going to have to do something to get that. What we also can do here on our way back up is get a very nicely hidden, uh, sort of a light blue vase. I don't think I've seen those before. 546. So, we're going to head all the way back up here. <sighs> because in order to get to the area beyond that zombie there, uh, we're going to have to make some jumps. <sighs> There's one, and then we can jump. Out, taking damage necessarily. <laughs> Shoot.
you'd be able to. This is a difficult jump, but you can do it. There we go. There. That's how you do that. Let's see. There's a bedroll and nothing really of interest. There's some bones behind here. Uh, now that hallway you see there is this hallway. So we can't really use that hallway because of the zombie and it'll take us to this. And the door is actually blocked by a boulder and I'm going to show you that boulder from the other side later on. Um, however, here is my ghost challenge for you guys and this is an interesting one. Um, I want you guys to do what I did, get down here or get to this area some other way, I don't know. Um, but I want you to be able to go back here around the corner to the right so that would be north uh, so that you can go back upstairs without busting supreme getting past the zombie without you know um, alerting him or anything like that and without using that doorway to the front there from here around the corner without busting supreme so show me how you can do that that's a nice little uh, tricky challenge for you guys. We're going to head in this way, and it says that this area is trapped, so there are actually some panels in the floor here. You can sort of see there and there. There's one here as well. There's three, I think. And then there is a rug in this casket, 566. That's all we need. So that we can get out of here a different way, simply by dropping down this hole. And on the lower level there are a couple of zombies here. Let's see. We're facing north now. So we now dropped... Um, we went into this room and we dropped here. So if we're facing north we can look into this north room right there. So we're in a four-way corner. So you can drop down either corner here, but that, I think, kills you. Yeah, there's no way. So we are going to head south right now. There is a torch that's been put out. There's an enemy there, a zombie there that comes up to that room. says that this area is trapped too. A statue that's facing the wrong way. So there is another uh, little square on the floor that you can trigger here. We can just jump over that. Fire arrow. Then there is a necklace. That we can take. So that's how you skip that. Trap. Now we're going to drop down here, actually. <coughs> Maybe we have to... Let's see. <coughs> oh, I thought we could actually do this without... You know what, we might have to use a rope here anyway. Let's see. I'll actually show you this area first. Um, this. You can see a sleeping zombie and a patrolling one. Here are two gold candlesticks. So this is actually in this room here. So we're now in the southeast um, entrance to that room. So we drop down from the level above. We drop down from this room into this room. So that isn't really an intended, but you can do that. Um, and I did that so that I could skip going past that zombie there. Let's see. 
here there's nothing, so in order to avoid this mummy... And do that. So, mummies like this are sleeping zombies. They don't give first alerts, though. I don't think they make any noise at all, hardly. Um, but they do wake up. It doesn't seem like they wake up, because you don't hear the first alert that they actually do make. In memoir of Father, Father Balmanok, lost in this vault on Pamponosis the Third. Um, CDLVI, I, in my head I can't take out what that is in Roman numerals, but uh, found in 40 years later and buried in the same place. And here is a statue, 741, so that was worth 75. So now we can just jump up here, that's how we do it. We are actually going to drop down here again. I just wanted to take that. Uh, Man. There we go. Now, what I want to show you now is that that zombie is now not sleeping anymore. It's actually patrolling. So by taking the loot, the statue down here, we've awoken that zombie. I think this is a fantastic way to make the mission progressively harder. The more you explore, the more enemies there are. And that is very cool. Now we're going to head in here. Oh, and we got spotted there. Oh, actually. Let's go in there. Pit right here. Let's see, we're gonna jump through here without falling. I don't want to make noise when I land, so if I can land in a mantle, that would be very quiet here. So now we are actually in the shrine. Actually, under this level, this is a two-leveled room. So the bottom level here uh, is where we're at right now. And that shrine has a loot item that you can't get to in any other way than the way that I did it right now. And there's no other loot items in that room. You might hear a sound there when you took that, so 841. I'll show you this room a little bit later from the other side. You saw that. <laughs> However, now there is a sleeping zombie or a sitting sleeping zombie that spawned. That prevents us from going out this exit back into this area here. And if you want to take this base, then you have to deal with the zombie, because it spawns, I believe, as you take the loot item. Or maybe when you trigger, you know, walking into this room or something. So the only way for Supreme for us to proceed here is to drop down to the level far, far below. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, and we are actually going to end up in the Grave Warden's Vigil. We're going to drop down a the body chute. Let's make a real save and do that. Shouldn't be anyone. Um, there's an apparition up above, but he doesn't hear this. Or does he? I don't know if he heard that. He has not heard that before from me.
It sounds like he's hearing it. I know that he stops and then he he turns a little bit, I think, in his patrol. It's impossible to hear the alerts of apparitions. Uh, at least I've gone up and checked before and I have not heard him being alerted at all. We're going to try to scoot down here very, very slowly. Okay. He definitely did not hear anything there because he started back on his patrol immediately. That's good. That's definitely not a bust there for Supreme. Just wanted to be sure. You guys agree with me there, right? It, he started walking normally. He did not start with any hunt maneuver walking. Because he's on the level above. And I know he stops in his patrol fairly close to this hole here. Yeah, no, that we're safe here. We're good. Okay. Down here, there's a red vase. There is a sleeping hammer priest here. And then there is a thief. We'll get all the names of all the thieves uh, in a readable later on. So, I haven't really spent much time trying to figure out who's who, but if you guys could uh, maybe let us know when we get to that readable what names associated with each thief that we find. So you can just timestamp it and say that this is that guy and this is that guy maybe. Uh, that will help me out because that is something that I would have pursued, but I wanted to get going on the other missions. So that's just a nice little side, side point there. So now, now we are in the Grave Warden's Vigil. We're right here now. Here's a flash bomb. And this can take us into the um, uh, Albrecht's uh, extension, I think. Yes, it will. down here. There's closed gates. That takes you back into the room that we came from. There are two silver <sighs> goblets. Total 890. And the apparition what? is right above us here now, I think. Okay. This one opens those gates. We don't need that. Okay. Oh, no, no, we can't do that. I didn't know the floor was... Go. We're gonna go this way. No, we're not. We're actually gonna go the way that he went. But since he chose to go that way, he can go this way also. Then we have to just wait. down to another grotto that is not water filled. I'll show you, try to remember to show you that from below. So we took a hammer now. 965. 
he's right was, there now. And football. Yeah. He's the worst. Good. Very convenient the way he went there. Good. Nice. This can be a little bit of a tricky room, just because I can't really tell the alert levels of apparitions. It's annoying because they're sort of sounds are the same. And now, right, that hammer priest is walking. Out. I remembered it the instant that I saw him. So he walks from where he was sleeping over here. Uh, we're gonna walk this way now. This is an area that has been dug. So they've connected the Grave Warden's Vigil with uh, the Albrecht extension, actually. You can drop down here, but you can't... Um, you can't come back up. And there seems to be somebody who's been injured here. There's more blood down there. There's a zombie with a mushroom. Whoa. Oh yeah, he's coming back, that's right. Just a little bit quicker. Nice. So now we are in the opening to the Albrecht extension. Um, so we've now gone this direction, southeast from the Grave Warden's Vigil. And we have ended up in the south lower tombs, actually, because we we dropped quite a bit, quite a distance, and we have come to the Albrecht extension. So here there are a lot of statues, beautifully designed. This area here, just you know, you can see up to the upper levels. It's just complex missions are very interesting if they have a good map and don't overly confuse you. So here we have a grotto. Here is a an arrow. <coughs> but if you walk into any of these lights, then you'll get shot by arrow traps. We don't want that. That is really the only trick here, is to just stay away from those. Let's see. So we want to mantle up that ledge there. Not by that. Horrible of a jump. <sighs> there we go. So if you come down here, uh, you come down to the bottom level, but that doesn't help you at all. <sighs> Instead, what you want to do is jump through this window. <sighs> Then you can lower yourself. Let's see if we want to do that away from the light here. There. So here, let's see. Renault Sacrain Albrecht, Chamberlain to the King, 540 to 595. So this is an old tomb. Here lieth graven under this cold stone, Lord Reno Albrecht, both flesh and bone, merchant prince and alderman, years 50, Lord Mayor, and twice Chamberlain truly. A good example by him may ye see, that life is truly naught but vanity, for whether he be unknown or great, all shall eventually turn to worm's meat. <laughs> That's kind of grim. <laughs> so we can't lean in too much here, but you can do it without... There. And now you're actually removing all these light sources, and then the, all the lights get on. So you might say, well, hey, isn't that a Buster Supreme? Well, no, it's not, because we have decided that um, unavoidable immediate consequences that happen at the same time as taking a mandatory objective, and this is it, um, is excused. 
but it has to happen exactly at the same time. So that's what it does here. It triggers this automatically, and thus that is not a supreme bust. So if it happens before or later, something that you have to do on your way in or out of this tomb, then that would not be excused. There's no way to turn the to reverse the light. So now we don't have to worry about any of those traps. No, we can't do this, can we? No. <sighs> can we jump back here? I thought we could. Oh, come on. Yeah, we can. <sighs> so that completed the, one of the main objectives, finding Albrecht's armor. Warrants another real save, doesn't it? I think that this might actually trigger an extra patroller here. Yeah. This uh, mummy. Let's see. There's a little shrine here where you can take coin pairs from the outside. It's fairly lit in there, so I don't want to take it in there. 969. So yeah, now we're in this little corner of the South Lower Tombs. This is, the remember, the lowest level of the South Tombs. So we're going to head just north right now. See that that area is marked as trapped and with sleeping zombies. Okay, I'm not gonna do anything here, so... If we... Here's a piece of loot, a skull. If we take that, then we lose, uh, or take damage. Uh, you can actually use a water arrow to cool off the skull, but then you also put out the lights, and that's not allowed for Supreme. So, um, this is, is this worth a hundred? So that's a hundred more that we have to skip for Supreme. So that's a hundred and fifty total that we've skipped for that mode now. So we're instead going to head, oh yeah. Instead, gonna head south. We're gonna head into this little extension here. <laughs> Notice it says that this is safe. There is actually a trap here. do that because that zombie stopped. There is a trap right here. An arrow trap. Supreme bust, so we don't want to do that. So this arrow is actually just misleading. And we'll learn about that in not too long. But jumping over it can be heard by some. Let's wait until he starts moving again. Okay, he did not hear that. We're gonna head in here. So this is this open area, so we can head in multiple directions here. We're gonna head south. This way. Uh, 
Here. Here's a holy water font. And that works. Here's two water arrows, a purse, 981, and um, there's another thief. Grave Robber's last words. Barlow and Ernestine went to scout and explore a nearby oubliette, but they never came back. They are too skilled to die to traps, so I came to the conclusion that they simply abandoned us. We decided to carry on after a while, but it was not to be. I saw Carlos getting get filled with the sharpest arrows I'd ever seen, coming from the walls of a room that was marked as safe, and moments later, Chancer got ambushed and was slain by the restless dead coming out of a room that was marked as safe as well. Then Nell panicked and started threatening me, saying it was all my fault. I tried to talk some sense into him, but I had no other choice but to strike him with my blade. I didn't kill him, but he was wounded and ran away. It's all clear now. The bastardly spawns of the tricksters led us into a trap by intentionally mismarking some rooms. And now they are after the gemstone. They won't have it. There's no way they can figure out where it is, reach it, and get out alive. Their skills alone are not enough. This place is just too large, and if they don't fall to the dead, hunger, thirst, and treachery will eventually get them. If someone is unfortunate or foolish enough to venture in these dark halls and find this journal, let it be the testament of a veteran grave robber. Never trust your companions, even when you are experienced. They will be your downfall. That's actually pretty clever of them. I need to be even more careful now. Yeah. So we have Barlow, Ernestine, Carlos, Chancer, and Nell. Those are the five that are named here. I can't remember if there are any other ones named in a previous readable. So those five would be cool to figure out who's who. And then you obviously have this guy. So there's six then in total. I like stuff like that, little side stories and, and just getting into it, getting into the world a little bit more. Let's see. So now we are going to head up and follow this haunt right here. There are two. <laughs> Artifacts there. Here's a rattling skull. There's also a sleeping zombie in here. You don't want to go there. So now we have we're heading up this. How far did we get in our numbering? Uh, six will be the next one. This staircase here takes you up here. And you have another staircase here that will take you up there. So those are the two. This isn't a staircase that takes you... Oh, well, it takes you up to a level, but it's all in this map. So we're going to come up here right now. But we don't want to meet... Uh, this guy directly. Let's see. No, wait. Wait, wait. Here is actually something interesting. This is a sleeping burrick. A zombie burrick. Two water arrows. So they don't spew um, gas. They actually hit you and they're quite deadly. I've never seen that before. If you go up here... Then you come to an area where I don't think you can pass this without taking a growl from this guy. That takes you up, so you can actually skip here. There's a tunnel. So I guess you can go from 8 to 8 here. But you can't go through this way, at least not in my opinion. Actually, let's mark it over again so we can save it. There to there. I'm just trying to give you guys an overview, especially for those of you who haven't played it. That we want to go up those stairs, actually. Wait for that haunt to come back. So we're coming up here now. So you can go right or straight when we come up.
the sounds the haunts make is still, to this day, the most frightening sounds I think I've ever heard in a fam in in a video game. We're gonna head this direction. I'm gonna show you guys something first. Um, there's a broaded arrow here. Might have seen me there. Here which is this little nook you see in this extension. Here is a, um, an inscription. And so didst we toil on a mighty blade would keep unruly dead docile, yet our burdens weighted too heavy upon us. Bronn, the keeper of Grimworth, right, we visited that tomb, didst fail to give the final blessings to the merchant prince and sent his last... Uh, and spent his last days atoning for his sins. So we blessed the tomb with a holy water vial. That's how we got the hilt of the sword. Anton, the keeper of Albrecht, did not skipping his daily prayers before the builder's shrine and died a heretic. So he skipped his daily prayers. And died a heretic. In his foolishness, Ulf, the keeper of Norcreer, did lose his holy tool in the fiery demon's domain and continued his work could not. Crendor, the keeper of Be Belor, was the most devoted to his duty, yet too devoted he was, starving to death in his toils. Now it is only I who remain, Alaris, the last keeper of the holy forge. So these are hints on how to find the four pieces of the sword, these four uh, middle paragraphs here. We've gotten one. Um, so Alaris was here to begin with, and then we got the one from Grimworth, so his statue appeared then. And then if you find the last three, all statues will appear, and then you can access this vault. I'll show you how to do that. Um, I'll show you how to find all of the pieces. Alright, here we have Sleeping Mummy. He doesn't give first alerts, which is nice, because otherwise we would have taken a bust here. And here we have another piece of loot we have to skip for two reasons. First, this is a light source, and it triggers a falling boulder trap. So both of those are reasons why we can't take this. So that's another 50 skipped for Supreme. That's 200 total. Okay, so we are now here, which is right above the Albrecht extension. This is actually the Albrecht area. If you remember, he, he didn't do his prayer, so you have to kneel here. Once you do that, this hammer will light up, and maybe you have to stand a little bit longer. There. The sword blade appears. So that's the second piece. I'm not going to do that. So that's not necessary for me to do, but... We're going to head in here. It says that this is trapped. Which I don't think it is. This is a healing potion. And then you have a rug here. That actually triggered the mummy. It, so the mummy open, uh, awoke from that. Again, that is not a bust to wake up zombies for a scripted reason. 1041. So we're not going to go back this way now. <clears throat> we're going to actually jump over here. room here. So that's this big vault in the middle above the area below. And here I can 
see a big... walkway up above. Now here is our stationary apparition. probably got caught there. I don't want to do that. I wasn't actually aware. No, I probably was aware that he was patrolling. I just forgot. But there's a rug up there we need. There's nothing else we need. There, I want to save it here. So now, actually... A hammer archer, or aren't they called the ones with the crossbow? I think they're called arbalists. What? Triggered. So we're gonna have to dodge him now coming down. Okay. This is a gate that we're not gonna take. But it actually takes you, so we did, we went up north now, above this. It takes you to the, um, not this staircase, but it takes you to the level right above that. Which is right here, isn't it? This is actually the top level, so the middle level isn't shown here. But it takes you out to this area. So it looks difficult to explain that. But I'm not going to take that because this is a very brightly lit area. There's a stationary zombie behind the waterfall there that we're going to deal with later. And you have to also close this. You can only close it from the other side. So that is way too difficult for me to deal with. He saw me. Okay. This way. Okay. He might have actually heard those sounds there, so I'm gonna. I want to head up here, but I want to take something else first. I want to clean this out totally. Oh, he came from that side. Okay. 
Yeah. We want to head uh, south and take a piece of loot down there first because we're not going to get back. <laughs> this guy has glowing eyes. It's, uh, it seems a little bit awkward when he walks, but he's very well made. Other than that. Looks terrifying. There he is, okay. Man, I keep getting that switch to darkness bug that is so annoying. There, I'm gonna show you what else is down here as well. This is the area that, this is where that sleeping zombie is that I showed you. It's a holy water vial here. That's pretty much it. There's nothing else uh, of interest. It's just a way to get through from A to B. So let's instead Aldrius. Let's just head up here. So we've now gone to the Aldrius extension. There's no map of that area. <laughs> they did kill each other for that stone in the end. <clears throat> so was this Barlow and Eldridge, was it? <clears throat> Can't remember. Anyway, here is a, I think it's a rope arrow. Or maybe a broaded arrow. get up here, you can't really get... You know, here's the other guy. <sighs> can't really get spotted here. <sighs> Platforming. There. <sighs> 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 This tomb crypt, I think, is empty. This one looks suspiciously. There are some enemies in the next room, so I'm not going to go a little bit slowly here. Ah, here you are. Now to get out. That checks off the ruby objective. So, you can go back and go all the way up. That's what we're going to do, actually. But this is the other exit. And that'll take you to a whole different area where there's lots of loot. And so we're going to go there. Actually, let's save it. And here we will actually encounter... Some of those sweels or snakes or whatever you want to call them. So there's one there. They have alerts just like other enemies do. That guy, and then there's one more in this room.
he will go in through that door, through that opening, yeah. We want to... No. We want to jump over there directly, I think, from the window here. That squeal there you heard, this is a little bit difficult, it's just annoying. Good, that's what I wanted to do. So in here there is a... Uh, silver... Goblet. I drop down here. There's multiple other of those wheels. And I'm not going to show you all of them, but if you go down this way... Come to a waterfall. There's this wheel eating a spider. And this is a waterfall that you can drop down and actually go back to the tombs. I'm not going to do that. Was that an alert? Let's see. go this way. I want to do that without making much noise. It's going to come back here now. Stopping again, okay. We have to head up there. There's another wheel to the right upon entry. turn dark right now so you don't get spotted by him or by it there if you go through the southern part of the doorway which I thought you had to do then you will get caught the first alert Alright, so then we come to sewer door that's blocked by a boulder. We're going to have to move that boulder to get in here. And this is ultimately the reason why we can't exit the mission behind this door. Because you can do that if you want to. Because there's no way to replace this boulder to block the door, and that would be a supreme bust. So we're going to make sure that we put that boulder back at the end here. And we get to some kind of a sewer outpour section. Oh, come on. <coughs> Gotta love ladders. <sighs> There's multiple levels to this. Here, come to the top level, there's a um, broadhead arrow and a readable. All right, if the tip I got is good, there should be a back door into Drekboon from the drainage canal. 
scout it out and see if we can use it in our assault. If it's like I was told, and we can cut off their escape route, I'll bring this to Monsiger's attention. And you know that means only good things for us. Good luck, my friend. Okay, there's nothing else you can do at the top level here. Except on the other side, there is a disruption bomb, which we've seen before, right? Then this is the entrance to the basement of Drekboon. So we're going to hit the gambling den now. We have to pick the lock on this door. No way around that. Conversation that's going to trigger. I'm not really sure when it's going to trigger. Make a real save. So, yeah, you didn't hear that too well. You're supposed to trigger it from somewhere else in the catacombs. You can hear it through the wall, and you can hear it a lot better. But they just talk about the fact that they were so close to the catacombs, but uh, can't get in there or whatever. There's two levels to this, and be careful because there are several patrollers on the top floor that can see you as uh, you are down here. Sorry. Two stacks of copper coins here. I'm gonna take all these coins here. This is a purse. There's three stacks. Here, and then there's one more stack over there. It's kind of crazy that we can... $12.59 is what we should have. guy. Here. Here's actually a kennel. Some dogs and one guy. Here's a key. It's a kennel key. You can unlock the, the cages to the dogs and they will attack you and kill you basically. <laughs> Debtors, Tarkees, owes 370 or 67. Note, he usually wins, but it looks like he's hit a losing streak. Send Charles in a week to remind him. Don't expect too much hassle from him. He's a respectable bloke. Um, Tarkees, isn't that one of the guys that was an informant uh, and was therefore put in cracks left in Thief Gold? I think so, or Dark Project. Sir Dorian owes 1740. Note, bastard is hiding in his castle. Might be hard to get him to pay. Last I heard, he also owes money to Monsiger. Norbert the Smirk Gossamer owes 551. Note, can't pay up. Serving time for at least three months. Alrighty. Here's a safe. We're gonna have to pick that. Here you have four stack of copper or coin stacks. Three copper and one gold. Now you can't close the safe or lock it. Kind of annoying, but it's okay. It's not a bust if you can't. And that key does not work on it. $12.59. 
1283. That's all from downstairs. Some players was a little bit disappointed by this gambling done here. I think it serves its purpose. It's not supposed to be a dominant part of the mission and it's supposed to be a way to have an alternate route out. Trying to be a little quiet because I got to listen for alerts here. guy there walking the walkway that's a dangerous guy do this head into this bedroom purses. These were the last pieces of loot I found in the mission. 311. This is a flash bomb. Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> There's three stacks of coins here. Oh, no. Can we not? 
I thought we could. Who's there? Hello? I think so. I think that's wood there. But maybe not in this... Because going out in the hallway here is is hellish. <clears throat> yeah, I think you can do this here. Yeah. <sighs> is actually Baffert's bedroom. You can pick the lock on that door, but we don't want to do that if we can avoid it. I don't think there's any buddy that comes in here. Here's a readable. My lord, here's my report for the month of Sones. 1621 cash bits and deal or take. 290 interest payments, and then um, payment then to Ramirez. I sincerely apologize for being this late, but as you can see, there's nothing out of the ordinary. Dranko and Jenek, however, told me they spied a few suspicious fellows lording about recently, going in and out of the candle shop several times this week. Could simply be some local noble wanting to refurbish his crumbling castle with new candles. But you never know around here. Dranko, I believe, is one of the thieves that ended up going down into the Bone Horde in the Dark Project and passed away there. I think, I think that's the same guy. I know it is not my place to question the choices of Master Ramirez, but Drekboon's location is rather precarious, and I know for a fact Monsiger's bloodhounds can be really bothersome. I thought I would inform you. Respectfully, Ginny. Okay, so... Here we have some kind of ornament. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Uh, but anyway, 1408... Here's the safe. Six. Six, um... Coin stacks. Did I miss something? I did miss a ring. Look at that. Small ring worth twenty, total fourteen ninety-two. Okay. This is simply a bedroom. Nothing of value here. A healing potion over here, kinda hidden. That's it. Let's go back out. <sighs> All right, now down here there's another <coughs> piece of loot we can skip, or we have to skip. Hmm. I thought I heard something. There's an axe guard here with a purse, but the only way to get to that one is to open the door here. You can easily do that for ghosts, but for supreme you get a first alert. So we can't do that. That one is worth. Fifteen, is it? Fifteen, yes. So that we can't do. Now, interestingly... You can't actually take it through the door. There. Like that. But that is considered an engine exploit. Um, maybe that's a part of the engine exploit rule that isn't, you know, exemplified in the rule set, but it's been accepted by... 
by the community over many, many years that taking items through like solid structures, there's no gap and no conceivable way of seeing that this can be opened without alerting him, then um, hmm. that is a bust. So we're not going to do that. So that is 215 skip, isn't it? That's not all we have to skip. We have to skip some more loot. <coughs> now he is hiding a bedroom right there. And that is also uh, pickable. There is a readable in there that I'm going to show you guys. So let's actually do that. From this room now. Uh, people around here. Huh? No, it's not. That isn't pickable, but there's uh, nothing we need in here. This is pickable. Uh, but I think there's only a... No, there's a readable in there. No, a speed potion. That's right. There's a readable, isn't there? In here? No, that readable is in here. One of these, there is um, three broadhead arrows, but here there's a readable. That's right. We don't need any of this. So I'm going to skip, but I wanted to catch everything. These two bedrooms here it does not have any loot. Yes, I know, but you got what you deserved. Making fun of Kitty Cat? Not a good idea, kid. Not a good idea. I wouldn't show my face at the goat foot ever again if I were you, and be glad you only lost one finger. Uh, I've known the guy to be less merciful. It must have been one of his exceedingly rare good days. you got to be less of a hothead. I know that crime is thrilling, but remember that this is a profession where people die young. And you better listen to what I say, because I'm almost 50, and last I know I ain't dead yet. Still hiding? I'm going to torch this place! <laughs> Alright, Alex. There. Okay, so where are we now? We need to head... This is where we need to head, yes. Go this way. Then you can actually get down to the bottom floor. We don't need to do that, but that's an alternate route around here. This isn't the way we're supposed to go. Where is... Dreckbone rules. This place is secret. Grasses will meet the goat. The cash pit is by invite only. Always text the patrons for false dice and hidden cards. Cheaters will be dealt with through cuddle and cudgel. You're allowed to drink only a nip of ale, nothing more. Toss pots will get the blood manicure. Don't talk to the debt slaver slaves. They're supposed to toil, not talk. Don't touch anything in the workshop, especially the machines. In the unlikely event that the place is raided, you are to take the escape route in the back. Patrons and the paymaster must be evacuated first. That is good to know. This is the main entrance. Here is a receptionist, sort of. And he has a piece of loot that we need. alert to the door. It does alert if we are too quick here. Get his 
first. 1502. That's all the loot in the gambling den. I'm working to earn just four stupid coins. Psst. This fat learns pockets will feed me for at least a week. That was not alert, was it? Overpriced boots. Overpriced everything. Are you interested in some good stuff? Sorry. Oh, that's the guy downstairs. Okay, we have to jump up in a different location now. So many creeps around. Bump into ropes, then you move. <sighs> there. Didn't get an alert there to anybody. Now we can head down this way. That is ridiculously loud. Why on earth didn't I save it there? So many creeps around. Psst. He said. That was an alert. That was something. <sighs> save. So this will take you to that back entrance that they talked about. So this is then in front of the main entrance into the hope it's not to the den. But that's good for us because we can go up here. This is the way you're supposed to exit the mission at the end. This is actually the doors of the candle store, the back door that wasn't pickable or open. Now we actually come to... Uh, this is Ginny's apartment, and we took the goblet in his... Uh, on his sill. Here is a silver candlestick, and this is the door to the candle store. Uh, store. So we can go that way and lock block the door, and I'm not sure if closing the door actually will alert the woman. I don't think so, because she's neutral. Uh, and we have to return the key then, but... Um, then we can't replace the boulder. Right? But there are two readables in here. Ginny, what the hell are you doing? I've been expecting your report by the end of the month, and we're already on the 6th of Vendemia. Ramirez is breathing down my neck, and he was pretty furious when he learned Drekbrun uh, didn't fare as well as Fenden and Sunny fare last month. I hope for your sake everything is fine down there. Otherwise, I fear for your safety. I give you two days to send me your report. Not a day more, Lord Baffert. Alright, and then there's also... <sighs> readable, I think, up here. There it is. Ginny, got the information you requested. It was not easy to obtain, so I expect, let's say, 15%. Anyhow, Mosult's place has only one guard. One Ri uh, Ricard Pike. He tends to hang out at the Grateful Rest after his rounds are over, which is just next door, so silence is of the essence. Well, he doesn't seem like the sharpest tool in the shed, and, and I wager you, the guys you hired should be able to subdue him quick-like if he happens to be there, I'd still recommend to make him pass out with ale. Mosult himself should be out of town for at least a month, and there's no one else in the house, so that gives you plenty of time to do the deed. Just for the love of the builder, make sure you tell your guys to do it quietly, because it's wall-to-wall -wall in there, Someone is bound to hear something if they make noise. Okay. So that's it for here. So now we have to make the long trek back to the catacombs. But at least it's not all the way back to the front right now. We still have stuff to cover in the, in the catacombs. So I wanted to break it up a little bit. Hmm. 
Actually, I think <coughs> drop to a mantle here. Okay, well, that worked. I didn't get any alerts, as far as I could tell. down here. I think maybe we can actually. Yeah. <sighs> See, that was the one, right? It wasn't the other one. There. all the way up to it. So now that door is blocked. Nobody can come through there. saw me because I because I moved. But if he comes now that would actually be quite beneficial. <laughs> no, so that means we're not 100% dark there. Dark enough to fool the other guy, but not too dark. Alright. I'm just going to stand here and wait then. So we don't have too much more of the south lower tombs left. But that's going to be our main goal to finish now. Oh, he saw me there. See that? I have to exit.
that way. Okay. The squeal there is is a first alert. There we go. Good. So now we can drop. Save here. Okay, we're going to actually drop from this vault here and down. Not like that. like that so we are now we've now dropped all the way down to this vault so we're now gonna head west and cover the western part of this <coughs> section This um, tomb here is almost completely collapsed. Let's drop down here, actually. See where this takes us. Go this direction, then you come to that area where I said you saw drop um, drops of blood. You can't go up that way, but it is an option. is where we came from, so let's head up here instead then. Go this way, you come to the area, the Grave Warden's Vigil, actually. It's also not the location I want to go to. So I want to go up here instead. It takes you back to uh, the main area, but if we go this way... Come to the waterfall. Here's a moss arrow. Might hear the squeals above. This is where there was a squeal sort of eating on a dead spider. Go this direction. There are two water arrows in the water uh, over towards the, the waterfall.
Or maybe they're here. Or one here and one over there, I think. This is where I showed you that you could drop down from the uh, Greymorth extension. And down here, there should be a piece of loot. Yeah. Silver nugget. Total 1577. That's really all there is in the water of interest besides these water arrows. But it's a nice way to sort of tie different sections of the map together. And we're going to use this to... There's the other water arrow. And there's one too. There might be... There's a total of four, actually, in total. <sighs> Here. If you mantle up here from the waterfall area, you get to this location. So if you, you know, go from this, you can go here and you go multiple places. I'm not going to mark all those, but it's, it's beneficial to know that. And in this tomb, there's actually a lot of loot. Three coin stacks and three coin pairs. Yara, and there's even a gold tooth right here. Well, at least I assume that's what it is. 1750. And over by where that zombie was, there is a gold candlestick. So we are actually now headed to the to the Velor vault. Sir Thomas uh, Bellor or Belor, Count of Rotomil, which is a, a mission, isn't it? For Thief One, I think. For Sir Bellor's death, leave no tear nor mourn. Thou art deceived. Alive the man is still. Alive I, and laugh, laugheth at death to score, in that that he his fleshly life did kill. For by such death two lives he gains for one. His soul at the golden city doth live in joy. His work as a fame in the old world have sown, as sack nor rack his name can there destroy. For once in earth his toil was passing great, and we devoured the sweet of all his sweat. So this is then the Baylor vault. Um, there's another piece of loot that we have to skip here. It's in this arrow trap. It's a diamond worth 100. That's a 315, I think. And I think that's all that we have to skip. I believe so. There's also a healing potion on the floor here. And there is... Another sleeping mummy up here. But nothing else of interest. Alright. We can head further in this direction. The hint to the Beller Vault um, for the sword piece is over here. The statue at the far end, and then there's a little pedestal to the next to it. Um, it mentioned that he was hungry, didn't it? So you have to actually put a piece of food on that pedestal. And that triggers um, the sword jewel. third piece to it. Up here is a hand with sort of a pendant or a, ne or a necklace, if you will. Total 1900. <sighs> we can go this way. So we've now um, gone through here. And there's a hole in the wall that'll take you north again, which
which is this is actually the Pizarro extension here but there's a there's an entrance here it seems like that isn't actually an entrance so here is one of the thieves that were mentioned there's a spirit potion next to him and there are, there's um, a pressure plate here on the floor so we have to avoid that noise there We have to wait for him to head back upstairs for us to be able to jump across without him hearing us. Let's see if we can do that now. Wait a little bit more. It is possible for sure. Silver Nugget, this is then the entrance that's blocked off or walled off. Alright. Something else I'm going to show you guys. Here's a, a loaf of bread so that you can use close by. I'm going to reload here, but this is the staircase that we're, I'm in right now. Take us up here. Where we've been before. And then we've gone this way. Now I'm going to show you guys uh, what this area looks like when you've taken all the sword pieces. There's one more I have yet to show you where to find, but I'll do that. So let me do that right now. It's this um, mission I have from before, this load. So now you can see that there are all. Five statues are here, so that was a Laris plus the one for each sword piece. And then now this room is open. Here are four areas where you can put those pieces. Let's see. Um, sword pummel. This one. I have a lot of objects here. Sword jewel. Sword hilt, and then the blade itself. So that enables you to get the Holy Sword. And that works on on um, undead. I mean, your normal sword works on haunts as well, but this one works on uh, On zombies too. Like that. A very, very useful weapon against undead. And uh, there are more undead missions coming, so this one carries over, of course, to other missions. So if you are looking to deal with the undead in this way, then this is a very good side quest to uh, sort of find. So, um, yeah. That's it. Let's go back to our normal save then. So we're now going to go up to the north lower floors. Let's just make sure we watch out for these guys. Here, this way. So we're now going to emerge here in the lower, on the lowest floor of the north lower tombs. So we're pretty close now to the Noir Creer extension, which has our last objective. <sighs> there are two patrollers here, and I don't really know where they are. <sighs> there is a. Uh, Sleeping zombie there, too. We're going to have to wait for this guy to move back. Back 
quest. <sighs> and the other patroller came too, so we're gonna have to wait for both of them to clear out. The two lowest floors of the north tombs are probably the most difficult in terms of maneuvering around. <sighs> Problem is that they have their sides to us, so it's difficult to find an opening. Stationary. There's a gold goblet over here. There's also two water arrows in the pool. He started going back. Okay. Remember I showed you guys a stationary hammer priest zombie? The waterfall. He's at the very top here. So you can see this is the lowest level. There's another piece of loot over there, but we're headed that direction, so we're just going to have to wait these guys out. This is kind of where I want it to be. Get blocked by that pillar for that light right there. base. There's another sleeping zombie. Here's a statue with a pedestal. And that's where you can get the last piece for the sword that I haven't shown you, the sword pommel. You have to put an item on that statue, or on that pedestal, and I'll show you where that is. Noir Quier. Okay. So now we come to a little bit of a tense section. Whenever you have a big tomb like this and no enemies around, guaranteed almost that there's some kind of trigger. Pierre Art, Arthas Noir Crier, Marquis of Regensois. Regensois. Stay, traveler, for all you want is near. Wisdom and power I ask, they both lie here. This little stone a great marquee doth hold, that ruled the heart of Regensois bold. So that is then the sapphire necklace that we need. So taking that, the entrance behind us closed. And this one opened and you saw that there was an enemy behind it. He didn't see us, but he just started patrolling as a script. So we got the sapphire necklace, but now we have to just make it out of here. Which I don't think should be too difficult. If you head left, you find a little opening here. You can hear that beast sort of moving around. It's a headless beast, I think. No, armless, that's right. Now in here you can find this. This is an ancient hammer. 
that's the one that you put on the pedestal to get the sword pommel. So if we just head this direction. There's nothing else down here. It's just that circular room where that hammer was. There's just these hallways surrounding it, but there's nothing else to pick up or see or anything like that. And now we're actually headed back out this direction. <sighs> and as you go up here, there's an enemy that has spawned now. behind us. And now the entrance. No, no, no. That's... I think that's maybe the same zombie that was there before. And yeah, I don't think you can close this. You can hear that enemy down below. It's just... Um, it's just a fast enemy without arms. Should we go down and take a look at it? Just for fun. quite tense once you don't know what it is. But. There. It's just an enemy that hits with its head. <coughs> so, yeah. Okay. So then we can finally... No, I think it's an extra patroller. We're gonna head this direction, up the, the stairs. But first, we're gonna head to this area. Behind the... The stairs underneath. There's a lot of loot. Blue vase, red vase, gold vase, a rug. And then there's also a rope arrow here. In order to get out, maybe? I don't... You, hear, you can't get out here. At least I don't think. Let's try. Oh, you can. It's just that you can bump into this one fairly easily. Okay, inside one of these cages, there's also a couple of... We got spotted there. Inside one of these... Here it is, sorry. I thought it was in one of those hanging ones, but I guess it wasn't. Three coin pairs. But now we get spotted, so we can't do that. Twenty-one, twenty-six. No, we might get caught by this guy down here. Didn't know how long he stayed there, so... So we are now moving up the stairs in this location, and we're going to come out. Um, 
in the same location in the north here on the next floor, but there are three or four levels to this, and only two are shown, so they're sort of on top of each other, the maps. It's dark here, I know, but hopefully you guys can see it. This room, there is a. Uh, there's a uh, right there. There's also a fire arrow uh, in that burning brazier. So now we're coming out where we can see that um, priest there. This is the gate that I showed you from that wooden walkway. Have to be able to fool this guy here. You can sneak very slowly in this area. You want to get into this room here. It's sort of a. We don't want to get too close to that sleeping zombie, but we want to we want to avoid the gaze of that oh, that's a, it's not the apparition the apparition is the one that we saw earlier beyond the gate what? <sighs> there nobody hears that okay. So here there is a font, a holy water font. There are two water arrows in it. And there's also a holy water vial on the little part of the pulpit there. Now the reason I jumped up here is because I want to avoid getting too close to that zombie and I want to get this statue here. So zombies that are sleeping are fairly easy once you know how to handle them because as long as you can stay away from their level. So if you get a little bit up like this they won't detect you and they don't hear anything. So we have 2251. So we don't want to do that. I want to jump over here. <laughs> Didn't know where he was, so. Okay. So now we have to get back. There is sort of openings up here, but this isn't rope attachable as far as I know. So I don't think you can climb up here again. Get up here, what I usually do is like that. You can actually... You're dark. There's a spot here you can be dark. Where is the dark spot? There should be on. There. 
because you don't want to get a first alert from that from that stationary zombie there. Difficult to be able to jump up here. But I have been able to do it. <gasps> Wait. Oh, there. <laughs> there was a patrolling zombie right up there. So, okay, I can't do that then. <clears throat> we can leave the rope there and wait for him to leave. And now this guy comes too. That's okay. So you can do it. You just don't climb all the way up because your head will bump into that fallen pillar at the top there. This is pr probably the last section right here that is just a little tense with the patrols. I have to find that to be able to jump up here. much closer to that to the rope than I thought okay uh, there we go <sighs> was that from the actual <sighs> I couldn't mantle properly. who sees me, if it's that stationary guy or what it is. get up this little area here and is he coming back here because we I think we can hide here let me just check if we can because then I could have gone just straight from the pillar yeah we can hide here
Good. Okay, here's a rope arrow. <sighs> but I instead want to... <sighs> over this way, because here you can sneak fairly slowly up this direction. And not get spotted by that stationary hammer. You can go along the ground down there, too, but it's just a lot more difficult um, to go, you know, instead of, of jumping over here, just go straight south. Because then you get into the lower parts of this shrine, but you don't need to do anything there. So let me show what we have going on. So I've basically now... Uh, I jumped... So this is the room that we went in and took that statue where the sleeping zombie was. So we jumped up on the upper level here uh, with a rope, and then we jumped furthermore up across here. This is where that stationary zombie is. So we've now moved... Uh, north, essentially. No, sorry, south. Into, towards the entrance of the ossuary. So there's a stationary female zombie right down here. Who pivots. There. So she stares straight out the opening, so she has to be facing south for you to get in through that doorway. And you can do it, it's just you have to wait a lot of, uh, and make a lot of attempts. This is an empty tomb here. So there she is, you can see. There's a water arrow there. And here are just some tombs. Here's an open area where skulls have spewed out, it seems like, but there's nothing else down here. We want to basically get to the entrance of the ossuary, which is right here. And here we can use some rope arrows to get up. I took that other rope arrow. We had two. <sighs> the one that I used to get up. So in the ossuary, you just have to climb, essentially. Is a red goblet 2259? And here you can actually hear the music from the gambling den. How am I supposed to protect And if you don't take the route that I took, then you will actually overhear the conversation that they had. Uh, in this area. So I'm sure if you play that mission, you've heard it better than we could hear it when I went there. That was a little bit too far away. From, but from this direction, you can hear it very clearly. Overpriced boots. Overpriced so now we actually come down to a different room. Here's another red goblet in a casket. Go this direction. Now we come to an area that's actually directly above the bridge um, just east of that waterfall. And coming up here actually triggers another patrol, or a mummy. There you go, he spawns and starts patrolling that bridge. So it's good that we've done that area before we were up here. So here you have two fire arrows and two gold goblets. Total 2317. So to get back down here, you can actually just drop straight like that, and then we have to move again. So the mummy goes all the way down there, you can see.
So yeah, now we have walked north, and this is the entrance then that takes you back to Grimworth. So this is the shrine that you might recognize. We've been here before. Go this way, you come to the to Grimworth extension above the grotto where we were earlier. So that's how you get connected back to that location. I'm not going to need to do that, but. I love the, the sounds here in the background. If we jump over, jump over here without making noise, there's an artifact we can take. here. This is the door that I said was blocked by a boulder. That's the one that's right behind where I had the ghost challenge with the sleeping zombie. So there's no way to, to or it would just be way too messy to use that for Supreme. So instead I am going to oh, use a rope to get back down here. If I can jump onto that rope. There. Okay, in this area there's supposed to be an apparition, a, a ghost that is not, you know, it's oblivious to you, that walks around here, but he sometimes gets stuck in the casket, which he has now. There's a breath potion in here, that's all that's in there. So then, now we are basically in this, well that's this little room here, but this is where we fell down. So we just have to now make it up to the upper levels, uh, which is basically through the exit here. Here's a healing potion. And here we can move this direction, which should be east. Yeah. Now we come back to this room here. So that zombie there is actually the one that was sleeping. And um, you recognize this area here? This is where that... This is the whole reason why we uh, had to drop early on. The one that spawned right there. Now we're back in this room. We can take those two old candlesticks that we saw. Got spotted here. Here's a silver candlestick, twenty four sixty two. And then if you go this direction now, so now we have gone out here. And that takes us into this entrance, number three. So if we now go straight, we can get into that shrine room where we took the gold vase that was hidden, right? But there's nothing else in this room here. But if you go up this way, you can come to a different area. We're going to go down there from a different direction. here instead. There, and now we finally come back where we dropped from above. Now I am going to go to this direction now, east not been in here. This says it's a safe area, so hopefully that's correct. There's a gold candlestick, 2512. If 
we go down here, we come back where I just showed you. But that's from the other side, so we're going to take this artifact. That was an alert, wasn't it? What on earth? Okay, that might just be an audio cue, because obviously I did not get spotted there. Never heard that before. Yeah, that that's just when I enter this area. Nobody sees me, obviously, so... be a scripted. I've never seen that. Has anyone detected or know what that is? If anyone can do some research on that, if you know how to go into Dramed and see why does that audio cue, is that actually somebody that alerts? They can't be. But anyway. So now we're going to head north. That's the only direction that we haven't gone. Here's another sleeping zombie. I know there's a lot of things that happen once you take a loot item or something. So there could be just an audio cue that was set to play there. Artifact. Artifact 2572. And then the last piece of loot should be these two coin pairs here. 2576. That is max for Supreme, as far as I am concerned. Now we should be able to head out here. And that is the original staircase that we came through. And now we come out this direction. Connect back to the other staircase. Go all the way up and we should be headed out of the mission here. <sighs> there we are, back at the beginning. Let us check our inventory. Andrea's Demise, Gauntlet, Necklace, those are the three objectives. Sword Hilt I took because uh, I wanted to remove evidence that we'd been there, and we had triggered it, essentially. And that's it. Awesome. <sighs> out of here. <laughs> Great. Alright, I love this mission. I think this is a fantastic mission. He's woken up for some reason. Okay, not sure why that is, but we didn't wake him up. Okay, awesome. So that should have been a successful supreme ghost of Death's Dominion. Um, and... We didn't get all the loot, though, but you can for regular Ghost. You can get Perfect Thief if you if you wanna wanna do that. So total time was one hour, thirty-five minutes, and nineteen seconds. So we took twenty-five seventy-six out of twenty-eight ninety-one. That is three hundred and fifteen loot below max. So the ones that we skipped, we had to skip a vase in the very first crypt that we visited in the catacombs on the top level. There was a fireball trap that triggered once you took the loot item and that's not allowed. We also had to skip a diamond, 
worth 100 in the B lore vault. Um, that also was protected by a trap. That was um, an arrow trap, I think, a regular arrow. Uh, we also skipped the golden skull that was in a burning brazier. We took damage if we took it, or we could douse the flames to cool it, but none of those things are allowed for Supreme. That was worth 100. We skipped the gold candlesticks in the south lower tombs, close to a mummy. Um, it was a light source, but it also triggered a falling boulder trap. So again, um, traps is the predominant reason. And then finally, we skipped a purse worth 15 in the gambling den. Because you can only get that by coming from behind the guard and opening the door triggers a first alert. You can take it through the door, but that's an engine exploit. Uh, so that's a total of 315 that we had to skip. We picked four out of five pockets. We uh, picked two locks and we did no backstabs or knockouts and no damage dealt taken or healing taken and nothing and nobody killed. Our campaign totals is six hours, seven minutes and nine seconds and we have taken 93.53 loot and dealt and taken no damage. So uh, this is a fantastic mission. This is like a 9.5 out of 10 for me. It is very, very high. It is better than most original missions. Um, I, I love the atmosphere down in the catacombs. And I love how, even though it is a very intricate and complicated layout, the maps really helps, and the different levels are fairly easy to section up. Although they look the same, uh, there are certain landmarks in each section that make you able to not get confused as to where you are in the overall picture of things. And. Um, Many of those sections connect in different ways. So there are multiple entries and exits from each section into other areas. And you can even take huge uh, shortcuts like I did. And I showed you a few examples of. And I like that the whole mission also loops around to the streets through the gambling den if you want to take that exit. That's a very nice way to prevent having to backtrack through all. We had to do that for other reasons. But um, all of those things are great. I also love the fact that there's a side quest that is so hidden that you might not, never even know that it's there. Um, and loot is hidden but not overly hidden. So it's, it's manageable to find what you need to, lead, to reach the loot requirement without, without any problems. There's also quite a few um, nice readables, the plaques that give some background on the tombs or the, the people that are buried there, and also the readables from the expedition of the thieves. Uh, obviously a huge nod back to Felix's expedition in Bone Horde. All those things are just it just made it very um, easy to like way, I think. Uh, there's uh, there's tie-ins to the uh, original missions to Thief Gold here like it is supposed to be a love letter, um, but it stands on its own, on its own two feet. So I love that. The next mission is going to be the Brand, which is another uh, undead mission, but it's uh, not similar to this. If this is a tie-in to Bone Horde, the Brand is more a tie-in to the Haunted Cathedral, but I think it's better than the Haunted Cathedral. That was never a, f a favorite of mine from the original Dark Project. Um, it was more of a chore, I think. But this, the brand is very good. Not as good as this one, but it's it's up there. So I hope to see you guys back for that. Uh, in the meantime, let me know you, what you guys think of this run and this mission overall. And I'll see you when I see you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.